Strap on your socks because they're about to be blown right off by another great episode of Creative Sweet TV. Here's your host, Mike McHugh. Yes! Yes! Welcome to episode 34 of Creative Sweet TV. Gee whiz, I hope you liked our new introduction. I did that using uh, Photoshop and a little bit of After Effects as well I've been getting into. Oh! And Sound Booth Production Premium is fantastic part of the master suite. Of course, all of that software as well. Hope you enjoyed that. You might have noticed I've got a new voiceover guy as well. So a very big welcome aboard to Nat Dixon, who's a wonderful voiceover chap I met in Brisbane. I've been doing a little bit of work in Brisbane lately. Sunny Brisbane. They need a bit of rain up there. Hello to everyone in Brisbane. Cheers. Thanks for joining, uh, joining us. And well done to Nat. Isn't he good? We've got more to come too, so he's recorded a whole bunch of stuff for me. So that'll be coming up over the coming weeks. Got a great tutorial for you. Hope you enjoy it today. Uh, I'm going to come back after the show and uh, speak to you about a couple of other things that I haven't thought of yet. Got a good tutorial. It's about five minutes long. Hope you enjoy it. So I better be quick. Here I come again. I hear many things when I'm out and about uh, doing training and teaching people things. And one of the things I heard, and it really upset me, was that you couldn't bring the gradient swatches from Illustrator into InDesign. I've never been so upset ever. Well, maybe I have been. Who knows? You wouldn't know. So I'm going to say that that's... Anyway. You can exchange swatches from Illustrator to InDesign, but it will give you a warning that you can't exchange gradients or patterns. Let's have a look. This is how we'd normally do it. You see I'm in Illustrator here. I, I um, have my swatches panel over there. Uh, we'll just detach that so we can have a, have a bit of a look at it. Uh, scroll it down a bit. Here's the swatches in all its glory. We're going to go to, uh, what are we going to go to? We're going to go to this little pop-out menu right here. Um, and we're going to choose, uh, scroll down just a little bit. Come on, guys. A little bit further. Save Swatch Library as ASE. That stands for Adobe Swatch Exchange. We've had a look at this before. Let's go ahead and hit it. It'll say, where do you want to put it? Well, we'll put it on the desktop and we'll call it uh, CSTV ASE. Put on the desktop, press save. This, swatches containing gradients, patterns, or tints are not currently exchangeable with other applications like InDesign. So, it's an alert. Well, I don't like alerts. I'm going to cancel that. Why would I want to do such a thing? Well, because Illustrator has got fantastic gradient swatches already made. Let's use them. I'm going to choose the little pop-out menu here. And I'm going to say, uh, select all unused. We'll get rid of them from Illustrator. So we'll say, yes, get rid of them. Let's import or open one of the swatch libraries. There's a couple of ways we could do this. We can go to the little pop-out menu and say, open swatch library from here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different swatch libraries already built in, including gradients. <whistles> Look at that. You know what? I love fruits and vegetables, but the gradients are awful. So let's choose something else. How about we go with the metals? We choose it here. We could go from this pop-out menu, so that's on the swatches panel, uh, or under window, right down to swatch libraries. We can go under here as well, and you could see there's the gradient swatches there as well. So all built in to Illustrator. I prefer to go this way. Swatches, open swatch library, gradients. Let's go with metals. Where are you, metals? There they are. Beautiful. Look at all those metals. As a matter of fact, we could just shift click and include them in all our swatches like that. Uh, new Illustrator CS3. You can even make a little swatch group. Oh, no pattern or swatch. Okay, we can't. Let's say that we can't make a swatch group out of these gradients. So that's nice. Righto. We want to bring these into InDesign and we can't save them as a swatch exchange file, but we can use them over here. And what we're going to do is, uh, I'll just zoom out a little bit. I think we're stuck right in very close. So uh, we'll, we'll do something a little bit different. Draw some 
boxes here, box one, and we're going to color it with one of our gradients, okay? Let's step and repeat this. I'm gonna Alt or Option, Shift, click and drag that over to duplicate it, and then I can press Command D and Command D, and then I can even duplicate all of those, select them all, and Command D, duplicate them that way. And then we could simply drag and drop our new color swatches onto each of these here, or of course we could use the live paint bucket, I suppose, couldn't we? We could do that. Uh, I love the new live paint bucket, actually, which is this little guy down here, the live paint bucket. This is great. You can uh, click on items, it'll turn them into a live paint object, and then you can scroll through the swatches like that. So you could see, let's zoom in and show you. Right arrow, left arrow. This is in CS3. We can do that with our swatches, but um, let's not do a live uh, paint object. Let's just work with what we've got, and we're just dragging and dropping them on there. I thought I'd better show that, because I'll get emails from people saying, oh, did you know you could use the live paint? Yes, I know I could use the live paint bucket. And I appreciate all your emails. They're really great, but come on, guys. There we go. How does that look? Awful, you're probably thinking. Doesn't matter. These are the swatches that we want to include in InDesign, so I'm going to copy them over to InDesign and paste. So what good is that? You're probably thinking, well, all of these objects, if I have a look at my swatches in InDesign now, look at this. There they are. New gradient swatches ready to use and ready to have fun in InDesign. We can apply them to text. We can apply them to whatever. Then we could just save this document. They could be loaded in. You can load swatches definitely into other documents. You just use the pop-out menu, say load swatches. So you could share them. You could drag and drop these into the Adobe Bridge and make a snippet out of them. Bloody hell, the world's your oyster. That's how you get gradient swatches from Illustrator into InDesign. You can use all of those things and it's happy days. Well, now good great tutorial, gee whiz. I hope you enjoyed that. Look, I've got a, a few Cheerios uh, to send out. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing a very special T-shirt. You might notice that the, uh, the where is it? The uh, butterfly over here that I'm wearing. If I just stand up to the camera, you'll notice that this is the InDesign conference. This was from the Melbourne InDesign conference, uh, which I spoke at just recently. So a big hello to everyone that sat in there. Hope you like the arr, the pirate theme that we had going there for a little while. Look at the back of this t-shirt. This is uh, from Barry and the guys. Snippet, snippet, good. That's what it says. Snippet, snippet, good. So there you go. The InDesign conference was a cracker. That was in Melbourne. It was a while. Seems like an eternity ago now. Can't wait for the next one. Was a load of fun. I've got a lot of e-seminars coming up for Adobe between now and the end of the year. I'm going to be doing a lot of travel between now and the end of the year as well, going over to Adelaide. So anyone watching in Adelaide, uh, I'll be there for about three weeks. So um, yeah, that's going to be good fun. Okay. And uh, better sign off because we haven't got much time left. Got to keep it under 10 minutes, you know. So I'm changing a few things around in the podcast. New introduction, new voiceovers. God, what else could happen? Hopefully, I'm going to shoot for a better quality on um, YouTube as well. So, welcome to all the YouTubers. I'll be using uh, Flash uh, FLV video format to upload to there, and I reckon I can get a better quality if I really push it. So, look out for that as well. Sign up again.